Hi, my name is Eri Kim, and in this lesson we're going to compare and contrast the substrates in SN1 and SN2 reactions. We're going to round out our summary of the two nucleophilic substitution reactions by examining our last important piece in this video, the substrate. The carbocation is key with SN1 reactions. The way that I remember that SN1 substrates need a carbocation is by simply drawing a line through the one, making it a plus sign like so. That way I remember that there needs to be a positive charge on my substrate. Let's see this with some possible substrates. Here we have a methyl carbon with three hydrogen atoms attached, making our carbocation in the middle like so. Now I mentioned in a previous video that carbocations have a lot of love to give. However, at the same time, they also need the support of others because carbocations are inherently unstable. Now hydrogens are tiny atoms. They have a tiny little electron cloud. I'm going to draw little green clouds like so. And they don't offer a lot of support. In other words, methyl carbons do not form carbocations because there is no electron density around it to support that positive charge. Our second substrate is a primary carbon. This is primary because the middle carbon that has our positive charge, like so, is attached to one carbon atom, and then it is attached to two other hydrogen atoms. There is more electron density to support our carbocation in a primary methyl. So I've indicated this with big clouds around our methyl group. However, this is still not enough to support our inherently unstable carbocation. We've added one more carbon to our substrate, and now this is a secondary carbon. It is secondary because there's one, two carbons and one hydrogen and our positive charge on our carbon in the middle. And as you can see, there is more electron density around these carbons like so. Definitely able to support that carbocation in the middle. Therefore, secondary carbons are able to support our carbocation formation. Finally, our tertiary carbon is called tertiary because there are one, two, three carbon atoms and our middle carbon has a positive charge. And tertiary carbons have the best stability. There are three electron clouds that are able to support our carbocation in the middle. Remember, electrons are negatively charged. They like to be attracted to positive charges. And so the carbocation in the middle will be well stabilized by three additional electron donating groups like these methyls. In addition to the stabilizing effects of those electron donating groups, we also have polar solvents. So I'm going to draw out water, which is a classic polar solvent. It has a partial negative charge on the oxygen, and you can get some intermolecular forces stabilizing that carbocation in the secondary substrate as well as our tertiary substrate. SN2 substrates have pretty much the opposite requirements for SN1 substrates. Because the attack is concerted, that is the leaving group leaves at the same time the nucleophile has to attack, there needs to be room for that nucleophile. Again, let's see this in action with some examples. Here we have a methyl carbon and the carbon in the middle is attached to X which represents my leaving group. There is lots and lots of room for my nucleophile to come in for its backside attack and kick off the leaving group. Next, we have a primary substrate. We know it is primary because our electrophile is attached to one other carbon. In this case, it is a methyl group. So while our nucleophile is definitely still able to attack our electrophile, there is some steric hindrance provided by this additional methyl group, and I'm going to draw that in as kind of a big green shield. Continuing on, we have a secondary substrate. This is secondary because there are one, two carbons attached to our electrophile in the middle. Again, our nucleophile is able to undergo attack on the electrophile, but as you can see, there is significant hindrance provided by these additional muscle groups. Finally, we have our tertiary carbon, and our tertiary carbon has a lot of steric hindrance. So much so that our nucleophile is unable to get access to the electrophile in the middle. The trend is clear. The more substituents that are attached to our electrophile in SNT reactions, 
the slower and more hindered the reaction is going to proceed. Let's go ahead and see how this all plays out with our apply question. We're asked to complete an SN1 reaction for our orgo lab. We have several substrates to choose from. And the question is asking which substrate will result in the fastest SN1 reaction and why? First of all, we want to examine the kind of reaction we are looking for. So SN1 reactions, remember that SN1 means that we cross out the one and that means that we have a positive charge. So we're going to be looking for that carbocation formation. Also consider the elements that support a carbocation formation. We need those electron density clouds around that carbocation. So we're looking for things that are like secondary or tertiary carbocations. Let's take a look at our answer choices. For answer choice A, we have one bromopropane. So A in the bottom is one, two, three carbons and a bromine atom like so. So since our leaving group is attached to the carbon at the end, that means our carbocation is going to be where I place my red dot. If I examine that carbon, it is attached to one other carbon and then it's also got two hydrogens. This is a primary carbon. That means that it only has electron density support from one carbon atom. If you recall back from previous slides, primary carbocations are not good candidates for SN1 substrates, so A is going to be incorrect. Our next answer choice is 2-chloro-2-methylbutane. So 2-chloro-2-methylbutane, that means there's four carbons, one, two, three, four. And on the second carbon, I have a chloride, and, and then I have another methyl group on the bottom. Since my leaving group is attached to that carbon in the middle, this is going to be where my carbocation is going to be highlighted that in red. And then I want to consider what is attached to that carbon. So I've got a methyl group here, a methyl group here, and then another longer alkyl chain on the other side. This substrate is a great candidate for an SN1 reaction because it is well supported by electron densities surrounding our carbocation. But since this question is asking for the substrate that will result in the fastest SN1 reaction, we do need to take a look at our other answer choices. So answer choice C is bromomethane. We've got a carbon attached to a bromine atom, and then it is also going to be surrounded by three hydrogen atoms. Since our only carbon is attached to our leaving group, that means that this carbon is our carbocation. Notice our carbocation is supported by tiny electron density clouds from our hydrogens. So bromomethane is a terrible substrate for an S1 reaction. Our last substrate is chlorocyclohexane. So cyclohexane means we have a six-membered ring and we have a chlorine atom on one of those carbons. Since again, our leaving group is attached to the carbon at the top, this is going to be where our carbocation is forming. If I consider what's attached to that carbocation, I have electron density on either sides like so, which means this is a secondary carbocation. Now we did talk earlier about how secondary carbocations are okay for SN1 substrates. The more electron density there is, the faster the reaction is going to proceed because that carbocation will be more stable. Therefore, our correct answer is going to be answer choice B.